All right, boys and girls are practicing the same thing that we did last week. We are um, practicing reading informational texts and making sure that we're able to answer the questions um, after we've read and picking out the details and things like that. Now, we're only going to do one of these this week, um, but if you run out of things to do, there will be some more resources um, on Blooms for your parents to look through, and you could be practicing, practicing this um, throughout the week. But um, I did notice while I was watching um, you guys do I Excel this week that some of you, um, I could tell you were missing a lot in a row, and I think it's because some of you are trying to rush and I just encourage you guys to slow down, read the question first, then read through the text, and don't forget to read all the whole text. Don't just look for the answers and try to be done. Read the whole thing and make sure you understand it as well. Um, I keep saying this, but you will get done quicker if you do it the like do it your best the first time and not just try to rush through and skip steps. So I'm going to do the first thing which is to read what the question is first. So it says, who is the text about? So I can infer that it's going to be about Jacob Fussell. And then it's going, and then it says a comma, and then it has a bunch of different things that um, he could have done. And so we're going to figure out what Jacob Fussell did. Cool history in the making. Before people could buy ice cream, it was usually enjoyed only by the rich and powerful. For example, for example, President George Washington was known to ask for ice cream on hot summer days. However, few other Americans were able to enjoy the cool treat. You needed a special machine to make ice cream, which was churned by hand. Finally, in 1851, Jacob Fussell, Fussell, I'm pretty sure it is, found a way to make ice cream more easily. Second paragraph, Fussell had been a seller of milk and cream in York, Pennsylvania. He often found, however, that he was left with extra cream. He came up with a way to use a surplus before it turned sour. He decided to turn it into ice cream, lots of it. Months later, the country's first ice cream factory was born in Seven Valleys, Pennsylvania. The factory used machines to churn the ice cream, making it cheaper and easier to produce a frozen treat. Soon, thousands of quarts of ice cream were being shipped by train to Baltimore, Maryland. From there, the ice cream was delivered by trucks to small stores. Then the shopkeeper sold the ice cream by the scoop to happy customers. Fussell sound, soon found that running his business in two different states was difficult, so he moved his factory to Baltimore. He thought it would be simpler to make the ice cream in the same place that he was selling it. He also thought he could save money since he did not have to ship the ice cream from Pennsylvania. This helped make the cost of ice cream even cheaper, and it helped make ice cream even more popular in the Northeast. Other people saw Fussell's success, and they decided to open up their own factories. Soon, there were ice cream factories around the country. Today, Jacob Fussell is sometimes called the father of the ice cream business. There are no, now over 100,000 ice cream and frozen yogurt shops in the United States. In fact, the average American eats about 23 gallons of ice cream every year. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's a lot. All of this is thanks to the efforts of Fussell and his ice cream business. Okay, so let's read, let's try to figure out what did Jacob do? Was he the first person to open an ice cream factory? Was he the inventor of the ice cream cone, the first person to ever make ice cream in general, or was he the inventor of hundreds of new ice cream flavors? Well, the best answer would be that he would be the first person to open an ice cream factory. And I can tell that because in the second paragraph here, it talks about how he used to sell milk and cream and he had a lot left over. And um, he decided to turn it into ice cream. Months later, the country's first ice cream factory was born in Seven Valleys, Pennsylvania. We can infer that he was the one who started that. And so that would be the bet. It doesn't say anything about ice cream cones. It doesn't say anything about the first person to make ice cream because in the first paragraph, it says that President George Washington already enjoyed ice cream. It was invented. He, he didn't invent it. Um, it just was way too expensive and um, for everybody to enjoy. So only the rich and powerful got to enjoy it. 
And then Jacob, um, the inventor of hundreds of new flavors, that wasn't what he did either. Okay, so that would be the best answer. Fantastic. Then it gives us our next, um, it, we're still using the same article, but we have a new question. It says, few Americans could enjoy ice cream before Jacob changed the ice cream business. Based on clues in the text, what is the most likely reason why? So this is where you have to use your inferring skills and you have to use your background knowledge along with what you read in the text to make a decision. So basically it's asking us, what was the problem? And it says, I, ice cream melted too quickly. Was that the issue? Was it that ice cream didn't come in good flavors? Ice cream was too expensive. Ice cream wasn't sold in large cities. So there are two of those that I feel like we can get rid of right away because the article doesn't really say much about this, if at all. So ice cream didn't come in good flavors. That was not mentioned at all. So we can get rid of that one. And the fact that it melted too quickly, that wasn't an issue either. And so these two top ones we can get rid of. Now, ice cream was too expensive and ice cream wasn't sold in large cities. When I read through this, this first paragraph, we can kind of tell that the main idea here was that it wasn't that it wasn't made in big cities, it was that it was too expensive, so therefore only the rich and the powerful were able to get it. So Jacob wanted to make it more inexpensive so everybody could enjoy it. So my thought is that this is going to be the best answer. So ice cream was too expensive, you got it, okay? And now we're coming to um, the part of the lesson that has to do with context clues. So this week I'm only making this one video for reading um, and that is um, because we're doing a, an article like this but then we're also practicing finding our context clues. So you're going to be doing another lesson um, trying to figure out what words mean in the text and this is what we're practicing here. So. It says, what is the meaning of surplus as used in the text? Well, let's read around the bold word. We have to read around the bold word to figure out what it means. So I'm going to start all the way up at the top right here. And I'm going to end maybe like a sentence like down here. I'm going to read all that text around the word. Plus, I've been a seller of milk and cream in York, Pennsylvania. He often found, however, that he was left with extra cream. He came up with a way to use the surplus before it turned sour. He decided to turn it into ice cream. Lots of it. I'm actually going to stop right there because I think I found the clues on what tells me what surplus means. So it says he often found, however, that he was left with extra cream. He came up with a way to use the extra cream before it turns sour. So we could actually put extra cream in place of this because surplus mean, has something to do with leftover or extra. So let's see which one of these answers works the best. What is the meaning of surplus? Something that has spoiled or become rotten? Hmm. He came up with a way to use the rotten before it turned sour. Well, that doesn't make sense. Something that costs a lot of money. He often, see, he came up with a way to use the expensive before it turned sour. That doesn't make sense either. Leftover amount of something or a lost or a missing piece of something. Well, if something was lost, you wouldn't be able to come up with a way to use it. So the best answer would be a leftover amount of something. So, it looks like we've got another question here. It says in paragraph, review paragraph three, based on the text, what were two reasons why Bustle moved his factory to Baltimore? So that means you're going to be picking two of these answers, not just one. It was easier to make and sell ice cream in the same place. Well, he thought it would be simpler to make ice cream in the same place he was selling it. It says so right there in the text, so I'm going to choose that one. Bustle would not have to pay to ship the ice cream from Pennsylvania. It did talk about um, how he would save money because he wouldn't have to ship it, so that could be one. Bustle wanted to move close to where his parents live. That article doesn't say anything about his parents. 
ice cream was more popular in Baltimore than it was in Pennsylvania. And that wasn't true either. Um, that wasn't a fact that was said in this article. So these two are the best reasons why. Mint. Okay. And the best summary of the text. Let's go over this here. The summary of the text is basically what is the text about? Like overall, what is the text about? And so they give you three options here and let's read them. In the past, ice cream was made by special machines. These machines required you to churn the ice cream by hand. As a result, ice cream was too expensive for many Americans to enjoy. Okay, so that could be a possibility, I guess. It talks about how, like it talks about the problem of the article that it was too expensive for Americans to enjoy. It could be. We'll keep that one in mind. Ice cream was first made by special machines in people's homes. Then Jacob Fussell opened up the first ice cream factory in Pennsylvania. Today, most ice cream in the United States is produced in Baltimore. Okay, so that's a little bit more detailed. And I like how they mentioned Jacob because, I mean, he is what the article is mostly about. It's his journey into making, making ice cream. Let's read the second or the third one. Ice cream was once only enjoyed by rich and powerful people. Then Jacob Fussell found a way to make it cheaper. He used machines and factories to turn leftover cream into ice cream. Because of Fussell, the average American can now enjoy ice cream. And that's really detailed. And I like the way that it lays out um, kind of his journey. And it's like a cause and effect statement because only the rich and powerful could enjoy ice cream. Jacob did this, and then because he did that, then now we as Americans can enjoy ice cream. I think that's my answer. Today, most ice cream in the United States is produced in Baltimore. I don't remember that ever being said. Do you guys? Mm, I don't think so. I don't think that that is something that we can prove to be true. So that is the best answer. Now, look, I want you guys, I'm to the next article, I want you to look at my score here. Answering all four of those correctly, and it's been about, oh, let's see how long, it's about, you know, 10 minutes. Um, you know, I, you're not going to be talking to yourself, teaching yourself while you're doing this, so it would take you less time. But I'm already to a smart score of 63. And so if you just take your time and um, read through and make sure you're reading the directions, make sure you read all the answers. I know that you guys are gonna do well with this. Once again, this is my only video that I'm doing this week about reading because I did talk about context clues a little bit. And so let me know if you have any questions.